Hi, and welcome to the World Beyond Belief. My name is Paul Marco, and I want to talk to you about a big shift that's taking place personally and by the control system. We need to be aware of them both. As we awaken and things shift, we really need to be on top of things. I was talking to a friend the other day, and he started bringing my attention to the fact that personally, for the people that are awakening, I don't know whether it's the onslaught of information, things that are happening at CERN, but we're a little different. Think about what's happening in the last couple of months and how you are and how you're relating to people. I think that you'll find that personally, it's a very subtle shift, but we're not the same as we were in May or before. I think that's true. Check it out in your own life. But I'll tell you what's for real is the shift that the control system is undergoing right now. See, what happens to happen right now is the control system, who's been masterminding us through Tavistock and, and all other kind of mind control devices, mainstream media and TV, have to come out from behind the veil and take total control for real. In other words, we're shifting from people that have the appearance of being free to knowing that we're slaves. And they have to come out from behind the veil to do this. And as they come out from behind the veil, before we're locked down, they're in a very vulnerable position. And if we're going to do any offense, if we're going to avoid this, we need to do it now. I think that they don't care what you think. That's the biggest shift. They are showing you that they have the force and they have the grit and they don't care what you think. I mean, if you go back to what we've been seeing, the will of the people is totally ignored. In Britain, they had a Brexit vote and they voted to get out of the union. Well, they might not be able to. They may or may not. The PMs may vote for it. The EU may let them out. But the will of the people, which used to be paramount, I mean, it was like democracy, the will of the people is what we want to go with, is totally ignored. The rape victims all over Europe are in the UK now, totally ignored. It's, it's not a problem. And then there's the ignorance of justice. And we see this in the United States with the Clintons being forgiven for the most heinous crime of lying to the public, lying to the FBI, and also endangering the lives of Americans by mishandling secret information. But she's walking. Loretta Lynch, who's the attorney general, refuses to answer any questions. She sat in front of Congress, but she answered nothing. Do they care? No, they don't. Uh, over in England, there's a Chilcot report that's a damning of Tony Blair and how he killed people. He got them involved in a war that was unnecessary, and he knew about it. Is anything going to happen? Do they care? No, they don't. So the concept of justice, you can just rip it up. Uh, also, what's happening with the false flags? The false flags are so sloppily done now that the awake community cannot wait to get them and analyze the, the stuff because they're so loosely put together. But do they care? No, they don't. Now, Black Lives Matter is shooting policemen. Uh, they're backed by the mainstream media, by the government. Actually, Obama and Sharpton are in a lawsuit, a, a process, former prosecutors suing them for the, uh, the officer's death in Dallas because he's claiming that they stirred up a race war. And uh, it's, it's so obvious it can be taken to court. But do they care? No, they don't care. And here's what's coming up. Obviously, BLM and everybody's being set up to disrupt both of the national conventions, the Republican to the Democrat. And uh, everybody knows that BLM is sponsored by Soros and sponsored by the government and backed by the government to cause a race war so that they can bring in martial law. And it's obvious to everybody. Can you see it? I'm sure you can. But do they care whether you see it? They don't care. That's the shift. They don't care. They're coming out. Here we are, and we don't care. Let's take a little run down through June and the first part of July and see what's changed to cause this shift 
or to show us the shift is happening. Let's go back to June 1st. Here's a satanic ritual that was performed in Switzerland uh, to celebrate the opening of the Gothard Tunnel. I don't know what it would take to show you that this is a satanic ritual. If you're used to watching Super Bowl halftime, you know that it is. There's, there's um, Baphomet himself with breasts and uh, assuming a penis, wings falling down. There's the, another representation, there's the goat. And outside, when they do the part of the ceremony outside, look at these people gesticulating in a very unnatural, very weird way. So what's going to happen here? They're coming out from behind the curtain. They're showing you they're Satanists. And they're combining all the religions together as one to worship Lucifer. This is coming, coming forth and... Uh, happening right before your eyes. There are the religions united together. But do they care whether you know what they're doing out in the open? No. They don't care at all. <coughs> we head to June 12th. We have the famous Paul shooting in Orlando, Florida. Obviously designed to put some smoke screen up for the Bilderberg Conference, which was happening at the same time. Now, security is so tight at this Bilderberg Conference that they were routinely arresting the journalists that even came near it. It's obviously not a bunch of old farts sitting around chatting anymore. They've come out of the closet. They are the rulers of the world, and they don't care who knows it. <coughs> Let's get back to the Pulse shooting. This was so loosely put together, it was irresistible for the away community to go in and debunk it. I mean, obvious things like no ambulances, no blood, never blood in these things. Uh, fraudulent doctors. The perp's father was a CIA guy. He was employed by a security agency. Everyone involved in interview were card-carrying actors. Simple, out in the open. Only people that watch mainstream media couldn't see it. No attempt to make it look real. Do they care what you think? No. <coughs> And jumping up to June 23rd, there's the Brexit vote, where the British people voted to leave the EU. This was really unexpected by the globalists, and I do applaud the British people for being able to do this. Now, whether they'll be able to get out or not remains to be seen. Whether they can get a, a government in place that'll invoke Article 50 and get them out of there, whether the EU will allow it. But it's not about the power of the people or the people's vote anymore. They don't care what you think. They don't care what the voters think. They do what they want. <coughs> and then staying in Great Britain, there's the Chilcot Report, which came out with damning evidence indicting Tony Blair for instigating an illegal war, killing millions of people. Just clear, definite evidence against him. Is he going to suffer for that? No. Is he going to be blamed for that? No. Tony's their guy, and he's not going to be punished at all. Do they care what you think? No! <coughs> what you're looking at is a picture of the sky above the CERN Hydro Collider in Switzerland on the 24th of June, the day after Brexit. They're doing an experiment here called AWAKE. Now, who they're trying to awaken is up to you to figure out. You know that this project, this whole CERN thing, is so dangerous that many physicists have filed suit to have this thing closed down. Are they going to stop it because of the concern for humanity of these physicists? No! Okay, moving on to July 5th, we have the FBI letting Hillary slide on lying to the FBI and improper handling of classified information. Common people are doing hard time for less than this. Here we go way beyond the crimes of Fast and Furious. The powers say we don't care. She's above the law. Yeah, we've come to accept this type of thing from Barry Satoro, but this, 
FBI ruling and the Justice Department dropping this says we protect whomever we want. Do they care what you think? No, they don't. <coughs> okay, and then there's the Dallas police shooting. Again, the story shifted in the mainstream media. That's what they do to keep you confused. They started off with multiple shooters because they were coming from multiple directions. But they ended up with one shooter, one patsy. When I heard that they were using sharpshooters, I immediately thought of George Soros because George Soros has used sharpshooters to overthrow governments all throughout the Middle East. He overthrows legitimately elected governments, like the one in the Ukraine that he used sharpshooters for. He's obviously trying to start race war to overthrow the U.S. government and put in martial law. He's not alone. Enough evidence has surfaced to have Barack Obama and Sharpton in a lawsuit blamed for the shooting of the Dallas police officers. Does Soros or Sharpton or Obama care what they do or what they think? No. And then as a follow-up to this story, rather than a trial by jury, the Dallas police force blew up the suspect with a bomb on a robot. I guess they forgot that they had tear gas or a lot of other options. Do they care about the rule of law or what the shooter might have known that they could have told them? Do they care what you think? No, just one more blown up patsy. And we need to take a little side trip into Black Lives Matter. Now, Black Lives Matter is tricking a lot of people into thinking it's a grassroots organization. It's not. It's, it's an astroturf. It's what they call an astroturf organization. It was started by the elite to serve the purpose of the elite. And a lot of people, a lot of people are being tricked by this. And they can play, they can use emotions to put people in, in motion and take them out of logical thinking. And I think that's what they're doing with Black Lives Matter because they're going to use Black Lives Matter to cause such a race war in the United States that they'll have to put in martial law because that's it. And that's a, a phase that I call normalization and we got to stop that at all costs. Anyway, there's a guy called D. Ray McKesson and he's one of the major leaders in Black Lives Matter. Ray McKesson of Black Lives Matter fame has been outed by the American Mirror for his cozy living arrangements via George Soros' Open Society Institute. Black Lives Matter is a subset of George Soros' Open Society Institute. Black Lives Matter leader D. Ray McKesson may claim to be leading a grassroots revolution for uh, racial and economic justice but he has close connections with the privileged and elite. McKesson lives in a home owned by philanthropists James and Robin Wood in Baltimore, Maryland. It's the same address he used when declaring his residency on his campaign committee registration form for his failed mayoral run in the city's Democratic primary earlier this year. Moore is one of the groups that received a share of the $33 million invested into Black Lives Matter movement by billionaire George Soros. On Monday, the, the Baltimore Sun reported the 31-year-old agitator, McKesson, is making a handsome salary courtesy of Baltimore School District taxpayers. In his new role, McKesson is earning a salary of $165,000 as the district's third chief of human capital in two years, which gives him a budget of 4 million and 56 employees. So he's simply a George Soros employee. He's going to do whatever he's told. And Soros wants a race war. Now, think about it. Eight years ago, we elected a black president who's been making executive orders. He could make an executive order and give every black person in the United States an acre of land in the federal lands, in the federal land management. He could do anything he wants. He's uh, written uh, executive orders that allows him to kill American citizens and torture them without a... He could do so much for the black people. We've had a black attorney general forever. That's the highest law officer in the land. 
How could racial tension be so much more, so much worse than it was eight years ago when the American people overwhelmingly elected a black president? It just doesn't make sense. You've got to stand back and look at this. Now, what's happening? The RNC in Cleveland is gearing up, and there's no hiding what's going to happen. They want a race war. Black Lives Matter will be involved. Judges have prohibited the keeping of factions apart, and you know that the Black Lives Matter will be involved. According to an article by John Rappaport, they have been recruiting crisis actors for a, in this area for a full year. Will it be enough to implement martial law? Maybe not, but they're certainly going to go for it. You can bet that crisis actors and provocateurs are already in place for this event. <laughs> Here's another one. Hold on, crisis actors are already being hired for the DNC event, oddly, for Bernie Sanders' hometown. You know there's going to be a lot of tension because Bernie has stepped down and let down people who were died in the wool Bernie supporters. They were beating up Trump supporters. They have Bernie's picture tattooed all over their bodies. I mean, these guys are really fanatics. But guess what's happening in his, own, his hometown? I just want to point this out to you guys really quick because it showed up on Craigslist that they're putting out a call for crisis actors in the location of Burlington, Vermont, July 26th through the 31st who will be supporting the military and in instructional exercises at a nearby unnamed location to simulate various scripted situations and with realism to assist military training. Role players will be moulage. That's made up with fake wounds and transported to appropriate sites. And it's this company here, Foreign Language Services Simulation, which is this company right here. And they talk about the different scenarios that they run. See, this is moulage. It says instructional and technical services involving live simulated or virtual environments, simunitions, blank firing weapons such as AK-47 style rifles, M4 style carbines, M9 style sidearms, pyro, and many more simulated RPG mannequins, etc. role playing. So that's what they do and they're calling for it in Burlington, Vermont. And it simply cannot be missed that this town and this time schedule is overlapping with the 2016 Democratic National Convention that's gonna be July 25th through the 28th in Philadelphia in Bernie Sanders' hometown of Burlington, Vermont. What are the odds of that, that at that specific time for those specific days, basically the last three days of the Democratic National Convention in Bernie Sanders' hometown, they're gonna be having some kind of military training exercise? that's so big they need to call out for role players on Craigslist. So it's pretty obvious what they want to do. They want to start a race war so that they can put in martial law. Remember, these aren't your elected officials. This isn't a legitimate government. This is a criminal organization taking over, just like they took over the Ukraine, just like they've ripped duly elected governments all over the world. Now, I was talking about normalization before. You need to know what that is. In the sequence of overthrowing a government and putting in a, your own government or martial law, you know, there's a series of steps. And the step that they're up to now is what they call normalization. What that means is they want to normalize martial law. So if they have to put martial law in, in Cleveland or in Philadelphia, That'll be norm. They're not going to take that down in Cleveland and Philadelphia. And so they'll try to spread that out. I think there's more crises planned. So this may not be the total martial law, but you have to know that their next step behind, after coming out from behind the veil, what they do is they create such a crisis that they have to move to normalization, which locks everybody down. When that happens, there's not much chance. There's not much chance to break three, as, unless there's an outside group that'll help. I don't know how that could happen. But you don't want them to get to normalization. So while they're out, and while they're vulnerable, you want to move on the offense. And I don't know what that may look like. You have to figure that out. I think if you're a black person, and you can try to defuse Black Lives Matter. That might be a good strategy. 
If you live in Cleveland or Philadelphia and there's something you can do to diffuse that, please do. If you're a policeman, well, I don't know what you can do. Maybe you can try to diffuse it or try to talk to the people because the next step, martial law, is normalization. It doesn't clear up. It doesn't go away. Okay, now, to move against them, against the veil, we may be intimidated. We may think that, oh, these people are so smart. They've been doing this for a thousand years. And my God, we're just at effect. We can't do anything. Well, nothing's further than the truth. In terms of intellectual ability, they're no different than we are. They're the same. There are no different levels of society. We're all the same. Um, they all put their pants on one leg at a time, just like you do. There's no difference. Now, how do I know there are in, were their intellectual equals? Well, simply because they've been working to dumb us down for 100 years. They've injected us with vaccines, uh, with uh, mitochondrial uh, inhibitors. They've given us fluoride. Uh, they've been dumbing down in the, in the school system for, oh, for a long time, at least since 85 and probably long before then. So they've been working to dumb us down, but we're still up with them. We still can see them. We know what they're doing. Don't be outfoxed. Don't think that they're so high above you. And they make mistakes. I always say this. They've been trying to implement this global warming thing since the 70s. And it's still not out there. And there's more people who don't think the world is heating up now than ever before. Also, you're going to be attacked by uh, people on YouTube, uh, people on Facebook. Uh, the social justice warriors will be out uh, trying, to, trying to hurt your cause. Uh, the regressive feminists are going to be out there. But the best way to handle them is don't pay any attention to them. You'll find that probably one of the best people that handle them is Donald Trump. And I'm not in favor of Donald Trump, actually. He's in a pedophile suit right now. And I would say that he's probably guilty because of other people associated in that suit. But let's go on. He has a great strategy for, for dealing with the social justice snowflakes. He just shrugs them off. I'm a racist. Uh, uh, yeah, well, and he moves on. So don't pay attention. Don't be held back. Just move on and do what you have to do. I'll tell you another good thing. TV is their major mind control device, uh, TV and movies. And TV, for the people that are waking up, they're like myself. They can't stand to watch TV anymore because the lying vibrates differently and they feel differently about it. It's like being assaulted. Every time I hear Barack Obama speak, it's like I'm being beat over the head with a, with a, with a hammer. I can't stand it. And people are leaving the mainstream media by droves. And they're going to more reliable places to find information. You can, you can help them as they come off of the mainstream media, as they turn off their TV. Honestly, I think if there wasn't TV, they would never have gotten this far. Now, you have to remember that social media is the battlefield now. And I mean YouTube, Twitter, Facebook and any of the other social medias. And you know that they're designed just like TV to be a mind control device. Actually, they're a social control device. TV is more for the individual, although it does work the whole group. But the social media works the whole group. In other words, they can see where you are and they'll throw some uh, a distraction or a false flag and they'll see how you react. And then they'll build things around that. They have uh, a legion of people that put things on there and they'll try to lead you in another way. They can put things on the mainstream media now that'll, that'll change you. Uh, that's your battlefield. Now, we can use that too. Uh, TMR, Truth Media Films or Truth Media Revolution, I don't know which he calls himself anymore. But what he does is he has his subscribers uh, go on to bogus government uh, YouTubes, uh, like from NASA. They're all, that's all a lie. Uh, also, uh, he's been against the social justice warriors and the transsexuals. 
And the transsexuals made a whole lot of uh, videos about transsexuality and how they're proud to be transsexuals. My experience with transsexuals is they're fine, they're upstanding people, but they'd rather be not in the limelight. I mean, they've been using the right bathrooms that suits them for forever. And so they don't need the attention. So what he has his people do, his subscribers, go on and give thumbs down to those bogus reports saying that, yeah, we know this is a government intervention. We know that you're trying to trick us with this. And every time you see something that's a government psyop, just give it a give it a thumbs down. I know that's not real powerful, but using if that's the battlefield. However, we can use that media. We need to use that bat, that that media. Also, there's another thing that's changing. As they come out from behind the veil, something switches. It's like if you can imagine a volleyball game, and the one team is all suited up. They've been working out. They've been working on this. They're great professional volleyball players, and they're playing against a team that doesn't know it's a team. If you can picture a cocktail party, people over there chatting and drinking, they don't know they're playing volleyball. That's the situation we find ourselves in. Most of the people don't know they're at war. They don't know they're going to be herded into martial law, into FEMA camps. Most people don't know that. But as they come out from behind the veil, they're going to find that out. So we have a great advantage right now. As they come out from behind the wall, we need to wake people up. We need to tell everybody. We need to show what's going on. We need to get them so that they're on our side, so that we can, well, we're a much better volleyball team than they are. We're as bright as they are, and there's so much more of us. They just have a lot of resources. As soon as we all get into the game, I think we have a chance of winning. We certainly have a chance of stopping them. And if we can keep them this summer or this fall from declaring martial law, which will give Obama a third term, I'm sure, uh, I think we'll be way ahead of the game. So here's, here's the takeaway. We've moved to a different place. We're in a different phase. We're at the locking down phase where they have to come out before they can lock us down. They're very vulnerable. If we're awake and we can awake other people, we can put off what they're trying to do. And if we can, and the longer we can put off what they're trying to do, the better chance we have of them not being able to do it. So I hope this was helpful. Thank you very much. Keep it together. They're not insurmountable. I, be I believe they're like the Wizard of Oz. There's nothing behind their curtain. Um, but we'll find out. So take care, and God bless.